Mr. Speaker, Patrick Hunziker, yeah. So, Patrick, uh, your beloved uh, title, Eradication of Atherosclerosis, I would like to hear news from you. Yes. So, I would like to uh, emphasize the point that I and others believe that we are at a time point where we should uh, seriously consider arteriosclerosis as an eradicatable disease. Why am I convinced that that is the case? Here you see a state of the art my, of myocardial infarction therapy. We do uh, we find by angiography in patients with acute myocardial infarction, we find occluded vessels, we treat them by the loon angioplasty, we give the patients uh, mechanical support systems. We succeed in reopening those vessels and we were able to reduce hospital mortality of acute myocardial infarction in the last 50 years from 30 to 40 percent to about 4 percent today, which means acute cardiology is a success story. As you know, uh, Arteriosclerosis is a complex disease. It's a disease of the cell. It's a disease uh, widespread in organs on the arterial tree. It's a disease which also has specific focal problems like focal occlusion of an artery. And it's also an, a disease of the interstitial space in these arteriosclerotic blocks, which is very good because it gives us a rich uh, field for uh, playing with ideas to, in, to innovate. On the other side, it's a real challenge because we should know uh, what to look at and what to focus on. Atherosclerosis is a nano disease. LDL nanoparticles are causal in arteriosclerosis development, and this is a very good news because it proves, nature proves us that uh, LDL nanoparticles go everywhere where we want to go to with nanomaterials. And so even this slide is a proof that we can use nanomedicine in the future to be much better in arteriosclerosis therapy. And we know that from our polymeric nanosystem, which we applied uh, years ago to, to target the arteriosclerotic block, block in transgenic mice with success, there are several ways how, to, how you can get to a block, either through the back door by the vasa vasorum or through the endothelium, or through gaps in the endothelium in the case of local inflammation. So there are various accesses to this arteriosclerotic block. And uh, I would like to show you that whereas we have waited a long time for results in the field, we now see suddenly a flood of papers focusing on the topic. In the last two years, we have seen dozens of papers uh, concerned with this question. For example, we see that it's possible to use small gold nanoparticles as passive imaging probes, but, but also as uh, NXN V equipped uh, active probes to reach blocks in arteriosclerosis model, allowing us to uh, stage such blocks according to their biological properties. We have seen that we are able to target uh, and to inhibit uh, thrombin activity in such blocks. Thrombus formation on blocks is one of the major reasons for myocardial infarction. We have seen that we can use chemokine receptors in inflammatory arteriosclerosis using nanoparticles to characterize the type of inflammation in such blocks. We are seeing that uh, if we deliver uh, iron oxide nanoparticles to the block. This is something that potentially that some people believe that might be toxic because it's a foreign body, it's an it's a, it's a aggressive iron storage, but we see in the, those experiments that actually the iron, the magamid uh, structure of the iron is converted to a transferrin structure of the iron, so the body is able to cope with this artificial particle to produce a natural particle out of it. We see that we can do multimodal imaging using MR imaging and fluorescence uh, separately or uh, in, one, in one shot. Uh, we see that transcytosis through the epithelium is one of the pathways to achieve loading of an arteriosclerotic block with nanomaterials. We see that we can use polymeric uh, HDL mimics to uh, mimic those, so to repeat the experiments which we have seen with recombinant 
HDL that is able to lead to plaque regression, and this is also possible by poly polymeric systems. We have seen a variety of ligands and ligand targets in uh, plaques for targeting. We even have seen that if you inhale nanoparticles, there is a potential that some of these nanoparticles end up in your atherosclerotic plaque, giving us a potential additional treatment option uh, in addition to the usual intravenous application of such nanomaterials. We are able to study the dynamics of uh, monocyte tra travel to arteriosclerotic blocks and from arteriosclerotic blocks by labeling those monocytes with uh, nanoparticles. Um, you see we have tons of research just now popping up. We can look at uh, oxidation-specific epitopes with targeted nanoparticles. Uh, we can do uh, positron emission tomography. We can, we can do a lot of things. So it seems that mechanistically the door is really open to the arteriosclerotic block. What we have not yet seen is how we can influence the biology of these blocks. And here uh, we have seen the successful story of targeting uh, prednisolone liposomes to the blocks in humans which is a very good sign because uh, we have seen a lot of mice experiments before. In these uh, studies, we have not yet seen that there is a therapeutic effect, and to me it's still not yet clear if this is a, uh, the problem that it's just a drug which is not effective in this context. This is very well possible because in mice, steroids in arteriosclerotic blocks are also not the best option, or if this is just a question of dosing, dosage frequency, dosage uh, therapy duration. You see more of those coming up. There are some uh, resu some uh, patients that have been treated in Brazil where they can at least claim that the patients did not suffer harm, although it's very difficult to figure out in this study what was actually done. So what I would like to show with these slides is in the last two years we see a, 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 a large number of information coming up that supports our uh, basic hypothesis that arteriosclerosis is really accept accessible to what we were doing for cancer since a long time. Now if we want to save life in acute car uh, cardiovascular disease, one natural approach is to improve everything which you are doing already. And as I have told you before, we are very successful in that. Here is the major mortality in myocardial infarction and 10, 20 years later comes the second uh, mortality peak after myocardial infarction because of the development of heart failure. Here we have to improve, but what we also have to learn is that the major gap is not in improving what we are doing now, that, but what we are doing 20 years ahead of development of a myocardial infarction. So the point is that you have got it. You have got arteriosclerosis. You don't know it, I don't know it, and we are candidates for the next myocardial infarction. So the question is, how can we select individuals in the future for interventions? Uh, should we uh, treat everybody in the population, this which will become very uh, exp uh, extend, uh, express, uh, expensive? What are the right targets? If we look at the vulnerable block, and almost every paper we have seen here is focusing on the vulnerable block, but in the clinic we see young people, young women, middle-aged women, young men who have very little uh, inflammation, very little necrosis, very little of this uh, vulnerable block, and they nevertheless have a plaque rupture, which also may be due to mechanical uh, aspects and so on. And those are actually patients who lose most life years. So if you have a patient who is 75 years old with a vulnerable block, with a myocardial infarction, he will suffer, his prognosis, his life prognosis will be reduced. But the prognosis is reduced most in those young guys who lose their left anterior descending artery in the heart and just uh, instead of a life expectancy of 90 or 85 years, they just have a life expectancy, expectancy of 50 years. So we should not focus, we should not limit our attention to the vulnerability and the inflammatory aspects. There are also the very elderly patients who have a lot of calcium and but may have little Inflammation, fortunately those people have rarely a myocardial infarction on those blocks. So what should we chase, vulnerability, inflammation, or should we 
chase a broader thing. What we have learned in the past few years, this is a, a study we did about 15 years ago, is that today it's possible to estimate the amount of plaques in your body by the milliliter with non-invasive methods. And I think this is a first step to go. We should learn to understand much better who is potentially at risk and possibly focus on such people who are at moderate to high risk but have no other signs of uh, arteriosclerosis. We know that uh, this non-invasive imaging of arteriosclerosis really uh, is able to select a large pr proportion of those high-risk patients. So the challenge still is uh, arteriosclerosis is a metabolic disease, an inflammatory disease, a coagulation disease, a perfusion disease, a proliferative disease, a degenerative disease, a chronic disease, and an acute disorder. So we have a million of potential targets. <laughs> Apparently, many of those, tar uh, those targets seem to work for nanomaterial targeting. We just don't know which one is uh, effective for therapeutics and better than the others. We also know that the macrophages we are looking for are very diverse, as you have heard in the pr uh, prior talks. Here we have marked three different macro macrophage markers in the same tissue, and you see that the colors are everywhere, but not at the same place. So if we have even in the same tissues, we have a diversity of macrophages, even in the plaque, and we need to figure out if it makes more sense to target these, these, or these. What are the goals of plaque targeting with nanomedicines? Do we do it to find them, to kill them, to stop them, to stabilize them, to divert them, to reopen or keep something open? We don't know yet, but possibly multiple of those goals are achievable with what we have learned in the past few years based on the preclinical trials. One of the major problems we have is that we have no model which really f reflects human arteriosclerosis. So mice models are just different, a different kind that resembles human arteriosclerosis, but it's a small vascular disease, biologically different. Uh, arteriosclerosis models in rabbits or in other animals are just as bad. And this makes it really difficult to progress fast from preclinical to clinical work. One approach is, for example, to have, a, like we did here, a, a ex vivo organs that are still vital and can be imaged over time to get uh, kinetics of uh, effects in such tissues that allow us to uh, follow the colocalization of uh, our optomere targeted polymeric nano objects with uh, the lipids. But I would like to conclude that we can now target the arteriosclerotic block with a variety of nanomedicines using a variety of targets. Early first-in-men trials in humans confirm delivery, but have not yet shown biological or clinical benefit. All animal models are deficient. They are bad surrogate markers for human arteriosclerosis. And defining the clinical scenarios, how to achieve a clinical benefit in specific patient cohorts, and even, patient, even more strategies suited for er eradication of arteriosclerosis in an asymptomatic population are now needed. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick, for this inspiring talk, as always. So I would like to open the questions. Yes, Professor Mange. If we consider these young people with a vulnerable uh, lesion and then uh, uh, an endpoint, uh, is there any common denominator known of these uh, plaques in young sporty people without non-smoker, without increased lip, uh, with no normal HDL, uh, normal co cholesterol, no dyslipidemia? Um, what is there the are, there characteristic? There are probably say, several subgroups. So what we see is some patients who have to do extreme sports and have some mechanical cofactors. So uh, they have a knee in the chest or something like that, leading to a traumatic triggering of that myocardial infarction. This is something which, you, which will be difficult to prevent by any means. There are probably the other group of young men who have uh, lipid deposits and have an active lifestyle, a big heart, a lot of uh, mechanical uh, contribution, which may be sufficient to lead to block rupture without a lot of uh, biological inflammatory stimulus. And then there are the young women. Uh, this subgroup, which may still be something somewhat different, where these uh, lesions in the arteries sometimes look like local dissections, uh, 
So this may be a, a different disease altogether, but we cannot, we don't know for sure because fortunately uh, most of these people survive the acute disease, so we don't get histology or whatever out of, uh, of, of, of these situations. But what I think it's still important to consider that the vulnerable plaque is not the only goal to be, uh, to be treated because this may be late. Also, uh, inflammation of a vulnerability of a plaque is something that comes and goes. So you may have no, no inflammatory plaque now, so we would not treat you by nanomedicine, but in half a year you anyway can have inflammation and a microbial infarction. So focusing on this moving target of inflammation may be misleading in the bigger view of uh, population-wise disease reduction or elimination. Any other question here? Professor Spohr. Nevertheless, your title is very optimistic. Yes. Eradication. Are you very optimistic that it is feasible in five years or so? No, five years is a little short. <laughs> okay, because, 500 because years Otero, or so. Because Otero... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Otero had five years to kind of develop clinical trials, and they have developed, they have shown some clinical data, but you have seen this uh, study period is rather short to, get, to show any clinical impact. So for er eradication... I would allow a few more years. Yeah, so, so, but, but maybe to, to ask the question a little bit more subtle then. Um, are we not, because you point out clearly that there are no adequate animal models, most of the positive uh, um, attitude in this field is because of the positive data in animal models. We have some early clinical uh, delivery evidence and that sort of things, but we don't have ad uh, adequate uh, quantification. How? What is the degree of delivery? So uh, it's very important for the uh, efficacy later, whatever. So are we not put on the wrong leg by the animal model results so that we are too positive? Well, I think biology proves that nanomaterials go to the block. Otherwise, it would not be there. If LDL nanoparticles could not reach the block, we would not have arteriosclerosis. And this is something you showed with your uh, uh, prednisolone uh, uh, liposomes that nanoparticles are actually get there. So I think we are not too positive in, in, in arguing that it's possible to treat the uh, block therapeutically. What is clear is that the biology of the human uh, arteriosclerotic block is not exactly the same as the mouse version. And that's why it's so important to do uh, studies as you have uh, as you have performed, to explore what can be done. But to me, uh, cancer, for example, is much more a moving target than arteriosclerosis because you have such a large variety of organ-specific cancers which are not uniform diseases neither. So if you break down, down cancer, you, f you end up that every individual with cancer has a different disease. And there is at least some homogeneity in arteriosclerosis as a process, despite the fact that uh, individual risk factors change. But at least you don't have so much genetic breakdown and variability in a arteriosclerotic tissue as you have in a, a cancer tissue with the disordered genetics. So I think it's uh, if you look at the biologic basis and the, uh, the promise that you get there by nanoparticles through the LDL story is a much better foundation to be successful than in cancer. So I'm very optimistic. Professor Romangimi, yes. Coming back to your eradication, I mean, it's very easy to blame LDL. Everybody does. No, I don't blame LDL. I just say LDL gets there, so we get but, there too. I mean. What about viewing atherosclerosis not as a vascular disease, but as an autoimmune disease? Could it be that something wrong with the immune system, and if the autoimmunity is involved, are we actually targeting the right tissue? Maybe we have to go elsewhere. I think it's a very important... Can we go back three or four, four slides? Can we see, Can we see previous slides? Well, if it doesn't work, I, I completely agree. I, 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 I think I have shown in one slide that uh, if we limit our understanding of uh, arteriosclerosis to be a local metabolic disease, we are much too short in our explanation. 
we have a variety of factors, which are a variety of aspects of biology, and at the same time a vari variety of potential therapeutic uh, handles to this disease. So, but uh, you're completely right, arteriosclerosis is more than just a plug in the arterial wall. But it's also a plug in the arterial wall. Uh, Professor Mange, and is it any other question? Uh, can we have the microphone, please? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. This was also the point which I tried to figure out in my presentation, that the immune reaction, um, let's say possibly also the autoimmune reaction together with the metabolic surrounding, maybe also lipids, and in uh, some cases not so much uh, lipids, but the reaction around the core of the plug. We have the lipid core, the necrosis, and around the immune system. Um, and I think um, it may explain us these very different phenotypes of the disease the, uh, as you uh, taught us be before, even in, in, in young people. Uh, of course, uh, in women, the uh, is, uh, ho ho hormones and uh, other special uh, situations may be important, but they influence the immune reaction, and so maybe it may be an answer as a common denominator throughout all of these very, very different phenotypes. Also, I think it's important to mention that those, non, those targeted delivery approaches are really a very helpful tool to uh, do future in vivo studies to understand arteriosclerosis in humans, something which has been really difficult up to now. So maybe the first step will be that we, we uh, identify patient-specific uh, biologies of plaques in, in different, uh, different subgroups and uh, go, uh, approach the problem piece by piece. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick, uh, for this very nice talk and nice discussions.